Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So we're going to take a look at the code assignment that we did in the last module. So that assignment was to go in and create Spring Boot properties files for each of the profiles of dev, QA, and production, and then wire those into our little messaging bank so we can see the output of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at my implementation of that now. Okay, this coding assignment wasn't too bad. So you can see I've added in three property files, application-dev for our development profile, application-qa for our QA profile, and then application-prod for our production profile. So I have dev, QA, and prod. And I've, I've modified our beans to, like we did for the default one, to take in, to be auto-wired and take in the string so we can string, see that string value. And I just see I made a mistake here. We need to get that message outputting as well. So I'm gonna correct that real quick. There's dev, we'll see the message there. There's prod, we'll see the message in that one. And finally QA, we'll see the message in that one. So now for this to take effect, I have to go over here to application properties and I'm going to change the profile. So now we're going to run in dev. So we'll see dev run. I'm going to restart this. Let's see that dev ran by. I got the proper message. And let's change this over to QA. And we'll restart it so we can see the QA message. And there's QA. And finally, let's do prod as well. So there's our production profile that just went by. So now one thing I want to point out is we've been wiring up beans to specific profiles and injecting those profile message. But now we have the profiles that actually in there and what if we use a non-profile bean? What's going to happen here? So I, I set up this example. I'm going to annotate with a component so that Spring picks that up now. And I'm going to switch back over to dev and restart this. And we can see that I got the, the message there. This is a default profile. And let me double... Uh, change this over to prod so we can see that as well. And the, the reason I did this is I didn't want you to, to think that there's a one-to-one -one match between having a bean with a profile and a property with a profile. So if the bean doesn't have a profile but you're just injecting the property, that property value is going to get injected into the bean. So we have a couple things here. You can actually see that the order changed here too. So that, that's actually important because Spring it isn't going to always create your beans in the same order. It's going to guarantee everything's created correctly at the end, but there, there may be some race conditions where beans get created before others. So we can see in one run, this bean had output first or after our previous bean. So the order changed here. But the important thing that I want you to remember from this exercise is that it's not a one-to-one -one match. So if the bean in this case, I'm going to bring the bean up here, the no profile bean, it doesn't have a profile, but we are asking it for a property. So those properties are in profile specific property files. So it's going to pick up whatever property file is active at that time. Now our other beans here, these beans are, are specific to a profile. But we're also asking it for a profile or a property message that is contained in a profile. So it's going to get that, that wired up. Okay, in this exercise, we went through and, and modified our remaining beans to accept profile specific properties. And I, I took it a step farther to show you a generic bean that just takes in a profile property. So I want you to see how this bean wasn't tied to a specific profile, but was still a spring bean being brought into the context. And now we're getting a profile specific property being wired in. So there's a couple things at play here. So we can wire up specific beans, have those associated with an active profile, but we can also bring in properties that are also associated with a specific profile that's going to be active. And 
whether or not the beans are tied to a profile or not doesn't matter on the property. So these are two things coming in together. So it, it gives us a lot of versatility. So we can bring in beans of a specific type, or let's say we're doing all our development against a uh, MySQL and we just need to change the database and password. So we might only have one database connection, but our properties for the username and password and server URL, those are going to be injected into the same bean. So we might always use MySQL. It just depends on where that database is at as it moves through the development lifecycle from dev to production. So it, you can see that there's a lot of tools here and I've been going through these exercises, not trying to get overly complicated with the specifics of a database connection or a JMS connection or a website URL, just trying to get you used to the spring way of doing things and, and the versatility that we have here and, and setting up our, our properties and profiles and, and how they can work together to really customize the deployment of the application.